it's not only emergency departments in hospitals that deal with the unexpected. That's right, Chris. All over the UK, there are expert teams ready for action. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line, saving lives. This is a rapid response car. It's one of a fleet of vehicles that respond to up to 3,000 emergencies a day here in the West Midlands. Time to find out what it's like to be first at the scene of a medical emergency. If you have an accident, this fast medical service is ready to help 24 hours a day. So I've got my camera. Eric's in the back with his camera. We're going to get you as close to the action as we can. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And a new case is just in. So at the moment, all we know is that three children have been involved in a road traffic accident, in a car crash, and that they've been taken home, but there's still some ongoing problem. We don't, we don't know any more than that yet. We need to get there and have a look. And just minutes later, we're at the house. Inside, there are two children, Annie and Ryan, waiting to be checked over. When did you notice that you had pain in your head? Um, I banged my head and started hurting when I was in my dad's car on the way back. So you didn't notice it immediately? No. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it, that you hit your head and you don't, you don't notice it, you're so surprised, and then later on it starts to hurt. After an accident, it's important to get checked over... Try and pull me towards you. ..either by a medic, a doctor or at your local A&E, as some injuries take time to appear. So you've got a little bit of a headache? Yeah. And has that headache got any worse or has it stayed the same? Still the same. Still stayed the same. So what Jan's doing now is making sure that Annie and Ryan haven't got any other injuries which are a bit harder to find. Push and pull down. Brilliant. Gosh, you're strong, aren't you? Do you go to the gym? So she's checking their strength to make sure that oh, their nerves are right, checking their hands and their arms. Feel me touching you? Feel me touching you? And she's checking the nerves coming out of their brain, she's checking eyes and mouth, things like that. But so far, everything looks really good. But it's really nice that Jan's able to get here quickly, assess them at home, and hopefully spare them a trip to hospital and any more investigations. Well, that looks absolutely fine, so that's good. Did you have any pain in your neck or anything like that? It ached a little bit, but it was... OK. It was fine. And you're feeling all right now? Mm -hmm. OK, good. They could, over the next couple of days, get some stiffness in their neck, which is called whiplash, um, which happens after an accident. Right, this is paracetamol, OK? And as long as there's no worsening headaches and there's no confusion and no vomiting, then they should be fine. So Jan's checked out Ryan and Annie, and they're both really well, and they're sitting on the sofa comfortably. And a lot of that is because they were both wearing their seatbelts. It's a really good result. And if you ever have a medical emergency, there are hundreds of similar crews on standby around the UK, ready to help. Ouch. Our next patient's day was turned upside down when a bizarre accident occurred. Let's meet them. In Manchester, accident and emergency, seven-year-old Yinka's in with her dad and little brother. Nice boots, little bro. So, what's the problem? I fell down and I ran my forehead. How do you do that, Yinka? Let's find out. Yinka's dad fancies himself as a bit of a chef. Is he a celebrity chef, Chris? In his dreams. Today, Yinka, her dad and little brother went to the shop to buy some tasty ingredients. Oh, I love food shopping. Oh, little bro's keen. But not as keen as those eggs. Excellent. Next, some sausages. Succulent. Yum. And some... Hey, what's that rumbling? Is it an earthquake? No, I think that's super bro's tummy. All this food is making him hungry. I know how he feels. Anyway, Dad, Yinka and super bro were on their way out of the shop when all of a sudden Yinka tripped and bumped her bonce on the step. Ouch. Hopefully, when the doctor finishes with us, we'll go back home and finish up with our special breakfast. And Dad still wants to make brekkie. I like it. It to help with that is Dr Adam Whitehead. So, how did you fall over? I missed my foot. You missed your foot. Right, OK, then. First, the doctor has to make sure Yinka hasn't suffered any serious damage to her head in the fall. 
Did she lose consciousness at all, Dad? Was she knocked out? No. OK. No bleeding from the nose, no bleeding from the ears, nothing like that. No funny clear fluid from the nose or anything. OK. Now the dog has a look at her bump. It's not too deep, so it doesn't look like it's going to need to be pulled together by any stitches or anything like that. That's good news. Now the dog needs to check for concussion. Inside your skull, your brain is made up of soft tissue cushioned by blood and spinal fluid. If your head hits something very hard, your brain suddenly shifts inside your skull and can knock against the skull's bony surface. When the brain moves about like this, it can cause temporary brain injury called concussion. So the dog does some quick tests. Just follow my finger with your eyes. Can you just have a look over there? And Yinka has no signs of any problems. So, what's the verdict, dog? She's well now, and this is just going to heal up by itself. OK? Result. She was super brave. Hopefully she gets home to have a special breakfast that Dad's going to cook for her. Now you're talking. Can I come? Bye! Bye. We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Ouchmobile ready for his first patient. And Chris is out and about in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Can I have the next patient, please? First in is eight-year-old Liam, whose scalp needs some studying. So, Liam, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile? I have a double crown. I want to know a little bit about it. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I've got a double crown and I want to know a little bit about it. Itis. That's right. Now, tell me about these double crowns. Where are they? Here on my head. On the top of your head. Well, I want to get a closer look. Can you lift the eyelid for the Ouch Cam? That's great. So, everyone has one crown at least. That's the bit at the back of your head where the hair kind of whirls in a circle. But in Liam's case, he's got two. And that is very unusual. What is a crown? A crown is nature's way of covering your head with hair very effectively. Your hair's also got to change direction. So hair's got to go down at the back, down at the front, down at the sides. And the only efficient way of doing that is to swirl it round in a circle. All having a double crown means is that you're a bit special and a bit unusual. Very few people have them. I've never seen one before. So thanks very much for bringing your amazing head into the Ouchmobile. And thank you, Dr. Zan. Earlier, Ethan came into accident and emergency with mystery headaches. Let's see what the doctors do next. Back in Sheffield, nine-year-old Ethan is in hospital suffering from severe headaches. He was having to wear sunglasses as the light made his head hurt. It got so bad, he wasn't even able to walk properly. Earlier, Dr Reddy carried out a series of checks on Ethan to find out the cause of his headaches. But so far, they haven't found anything unusual. With the culprit for the headaches still at large, Ethan is sent for a CT scan to rule out anything more serious. A CT scan is a special kind of X-ray. It gives clearer and more detailed pictures of the inside of your body than a normal X-ray. CT images of Ethan's head will give the doctors vital information about his brain, soft tissue and blood vessels around it to make sure that everything is working properly. There's the kind of base of the skull and then all of this is brain in the middle. Do you didn't know what it felt like. What did it feel like? It felt like a freezing cold spaceship. It well, if you're going to go into space, why not go in your onesie? Dr Reddy takes a look at Ethan's scan. I'm just looking for, is there any bleed, you know, uh, or a tumour, just to rule out those things. You know. For my eyes, it looks OK to me. So the doctors have ruled out anything serious going on inside Ethan's head. And it's time to deliver the good news to our patient. Well, the scan is all right, yeah? I think, you know, it's been reported as normal. As an emergency department, we just want to rule out the basic, you know, worst scenarios. And then um, I write a letter for the GP to, to follow him up. With Ethan feeling better, he's off home. Since Ethan left hospital, he hasn't had any more headaches and all is well. If you have a medical emergency, there are teams of paramedics on standby 24-7, ready to leap into action. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. 
She's got all the kit she needs when she turns up and is the first responder at the scene of an emergency. Right, Jan, let me give you a help with that kit. Come on, let's go. Uh, Chris? Honestly, Chris. <laughs> and new cases just in. So we've just got a call to an eight-year-old boy who's fallen off a zip line in a playground and banged his head on a metal pole. So this is potentially a really serious injury. So he's got to get there quickly and make sure he's OK. So we rush to the scene. You guys call the ambulance. And Jan's quickly attending to the patient. Any pain while I'm touching your neck, darling? No. No? As it's a head injury, Jan needs to check for spinal injuries and any other trauma. Can you move your legs for me? Wiggle on. Lift them up. That's it. And the other one. Fantastic. He seems fine. Now for the wound itself. Right, let's have really? a look. He's got quite a nasty gash around his eye. You'll have a little scar. All the girls will think you're a superhero. Hey, so do you remember hitting your head? Yeah. That's a really good sign. Everything seems fine at the moment, apart from that cut. Dad carries him over to the ambulance. Joshua's going to be going to hospital with the ambulance crew and potentially having some stitches on top of his head. So, Josh, how are you feeling now? You feel like you're in good hands here in the ambulance? Yeah. Josh is one tough little boy. Banged his head really hard. But you know what the really good thing here is? That he remembers hitting his head. He didn't go unconscious. So his head injury is less likely to be serious. And next time, he'll be a bit more careful on the zip line. Ouch! All over the UK, there are emergency teams standing by, ready to help you. And they need to get to the scene of an accident fast. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. This is a rapid response vehicle. It's on standby 24-7 to respond to whatever emergency calls come in. Today, I'm going along for the ride, and you're coming with me. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And a new case is just in. We're going to see someone who's got a very severe cut on the head and they're refusing to go to hospital. Now, the reason we don't have the sirens on or the blue lights on is because they're with an ambulance crew at the moment. But Jan is the only person on call at the moment who can glue his head together, which is what we're going to try and do. At the house, the man, Paul, is in good spirits despite the nasty gash to his head. Thanks for coming out, it's short nice. It's all right. As a paramedic with 10 years' experience, Jan has the expert training needed to use special glue to join Paul's wound together. Right, this glue might sting a little bit, OK? How's that feel, Paul? Can't feel it. Not stinging. Good. The super glue that Jan's using now will hold that wound closed. It doesn't need stitches, and it stops the bleeding. It'll stop infection getting in, and it gives a, it gives a nice result. It gives a tidy scar. All large head wounds should be seen at a hospital, but Paul has refused to go, so Jan gives him some advice. Any headaches that aren't controlled with painkillers will need to be assessed at the hospital. Okay. Vomiting more than twice will need to be assessed at the hospital. Good. We have got a slight issue. What? My fingers are stuck to your head. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Jan has done all she can for Paul, and it's up to him now to be vigilant and spot any side effects. See you then. Take care, see you later. Bye. Bye. See ya. So even though Paul didn't want to go to hospital, we were still able to glue his head together. That stopped the bleeding, it reduces pain, it reduces the chances of infection, and we've given him some really clear advice about what to do if he gets worse and he does need to go to hospital. And that's all thanks to Jan. With hundreds of rapid response crews in the UK, if you have an accident, an emergency service like this won't be far away. Now, did you know that the average human head weighs as much as a watermelon? That's amazing, and so's this. OK, Zand, I've got something for you. Can you guess what makes this man amazing? Wow, he doesn't look happy. Is he the angriest man in the world? No. He's not on the toilet, is he? No. This is John Evans. He's a world record-holding head balancer. He's balanced a washing machine in a fridge, a car, and even Doctor Who's TARDIS on his head. What's he going to balance for us? 
20 tubs on a large metal frame. Whoa, I think that's amazing. It is Zon, and here's why. He's carrying on his head the weight equivalent of 20 bags of sugar or 500 lemons for one seven-year-old boy. Go on. John's held more than 40 world records for balancing all sorts of things on his head. And when it comes to competitions, he really gives it everything he's got. Oh, I've done tremendous things. Two girls on bicycles, 98 milk crates all in one time, 548 footballs. So how does John's amazing body do this? Well, the secret is his massive and powerful neck. Whereas your average man's neck is 40 centimetres around, John's comes in at a whopping 54. That's the size of Selena Gomez's waist and nearly twice as big as your neck. Wow, that's big. But the real power, though, comes from the muscles inside. There are five major muscles in the neck, but the heavyweights are the trapezius muscles at the back. I do have the strongest neck in the world. It's as solid as concrete. OK, I'm sold. That's amazing.